All right? You're with Al. And I have no idea what this video is going to be about. So, I hope you enjoy it. I get worried with the videos. Not worried, but a little bit anxious about the stuff that I'm doing. Especially at the moment, because I'm just in the garage. Do you know what I mean? And there's only so much you can do it and balls into a white curtain. And I, I worry that people won't find it interesting and everything, but going back to why I started the channel, I wanted it to sort of document my own practice. It makes me accountable for what I'm doing. And then if people can learn from the stuff that I'm doing, then that's kind of the whole point. I was coming in to do a practice session anyway, so I'm just going to do a practice session and then just talk through some of my thoughts, whatever comes into my head, which could be a bit of a dangerous game, but you could call it Confessions of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. A little standard warm up with the TRS. This has been, this has been like, what word can I say? Revolutionary for me. It's kind of like everything I've tried to do in my golf swing, this has helped me out so much. It really has helped me out. If I'd had this a few years ago, I think I would be in a different place than what I have been in the past, to be honest with you. But having said that, the videos that I've been doing have helped me massively because I'm able to watch it back. And that's the whole point of it. Makes me accountable for my practice. I've been thinking about it a lot recently. Something that really held me back over the years. So I went to college in the States, in Florida, struggled with the grass, developed a real issue with my short game and pitching, real, real like big problems with it. But my main strength was my ball striking. Because I started struggling with the short game, I spent literally every moment of practice just trying to hit a decent pitch shot. And it was all technique. You know, it was so much like conscious, get it here, do that, because it was always really steep and shallow with it. Sorry, steep and narrow with it. So it was all like, always technical thoughts. And then because I did that, I managed to turn a weakness into, basically it got weaker. But because I'd spent so much time at it, I'd turned my strength into a weakness as well. I was in a bit of a mess, and you hear that all the time, don't you? You know, turn a weakness into a strength. I'm not sure it's a good idea. And I think if I just worked on turning my weakness, which was the short game, into something that was okay, not necessarily a strength, I'd have been miles better off because I'd have maintained or improved my strength of ball striking, and overall my game would have been better. And I just feel that that's probably something that... That was nice, wasn't it? Come back to me. I just feel that was probably something that over time held me back. I'm not making excuses here at all, because I'm not, because... I am keener than I've ever been right now, certainly to play competitive golf. Of course, you've got to identify areas you need to get better at, no doubt but just make sure you're not neglecting the other sides because it's so easy to get overly obsessed and then before you know it, you, you're in a place that basically you're worse off than you were before and that's definitely what happened to me. And, and this is going back now, you know, we're going back over 15 years ago and I feel like I'm only just getting back to the ball striking that, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm better ball striking now, but I'm only getting back to being confident in that side of things. And my short game pitching is all right. You know, it's not amazing. It's not. And I can keep getting it better. But get it better through doing the challenges, through being a little bit more uh, competitive-based practice rather than just being obsessed with technique. So that side of my game is a lot better. And I feel like I'm technically a lot better in the golf swing. I've got a little thought on a technique in my golf swing, actually. People that I teach, especially, most that have issues are slightly steep or over the top. And this is a thought that I have now with my golf swing, just when I'm working technically and I feel like it has improved me, just a different approach to get the club shallow in a little bit. So if you get to the top of your back swing, on the way down, I mean, this was my fault, because I always got this right shoulder in, 
to go in, club would get narrow, steep, and then have to back up, which then get me flipping it. So if you get a feeling of getting to the top of the backswing and then focus on making the distance between your ear and the outside of your right shoulder as long as you can. So you're here. See, I feel like this is stretched down now. So that distance there is as long as it can be. And you can see how the club shallows rather than that's as short as it can be, get steep here long as it can be and you can see that club can then just come from the inside continue on the turn the club can just release on the arc and that's where i feel i mean that felt lovely when i get it right it feels so good and so free because the club is just following the rotation of my body and i love that fact honestly I love hitting balls, I love this process and I'm, I'm so much more excited to play tournaments now because I feel like I'm in a better place for it. Got a little bit more on that as well, I'm getting deep today. Garage rules in it, introduced the garage rules last week. There's the volley, there's the glove slam. And a few people added more on the comments of the video last week. I'll link that up here. If you've got any more garage rules, keep adding them because we're going to write a rule book for the garage. I've got... I have started to put a schedule together. So I've put quite a few bits in. I think I've got probably... Um, probably about 10 tournaments put in at the moment. And then I'm going to see how it goes. See how I play, see how I feel towards the end of the year. And we decide, I don't know what's happening with Q school or anything like that. I don't know whether they're going to have that this year or what, but we'll see where we're at in every aspect of the game and, and see if we can have a go. Um, open qualifying is one, definitely. I've got PGA regional stuff to play in. Um, so I, I'm, at the moment, I'm so keen to get out. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Always volley. That's right on the edge of my toe, that. Right on the edge of my toe, that. The opportunity was there, I couldn't, I couldn't not do that, but that is right on the edge of my toe. But I've got a little bit more on tournament play in the past and the way that I felt about it. And it's probably a way that I feel a lot of people may sort of think about the game. A couple more feelings. Long in that neck, open up. In the past, I've probably not probably, I have, I've avoided playing tournaments because of the discomfort I'd feel, the fear of not shooting a good score, that stopped me from playing, you know I'd avoid that thing whereas now I feel like that discomfort of playing is a good sign, it's because you want to play and you want to do well, that's why I want to try and play as much as I can this year. I don't know, it just feels a little bit different. I just feel like I've applied myself and applied my head a little bit better. Oh, look at that, back into the pile. My levels of like expectation and highs and lows were, were too big a difference between the two. So I remember, couldn't make a cut on EuroPro, just couldn't, I really struggled, you know, just wasn't playing anywhere near like my capabilities like I felt like I could play uh, let what other people were thinking kind of affect me not even what they were thinking because the people you're playing against they don't care at the end of the day but I wanted to show that I was better than what I was showing but I let the bad scores really define me so my bad scores was like well that's the goal for I am and I was kind of like thinking of I just need one good result one good result and I'll be there you know that'll sort me out that'll give me the confidence I need I started to get a couple of results like I made three cuts in a row played quite nice put myself in contention a couple of times got on TV it was on TV yeah on Sky Sports see when I was on this hole with my bald head it's not very nice with that rain flying on it it's got some nice you know, some nice cushion there on top of his head. Shot 49 on the back nine, but let's not talk about that. That sort of put me on a high then. So I was like, yes, okay, that's it. I've got it. You know, feel great about it. Missed the next cut and I went from there to there again. 
And it was just like, I feel like the higher you are, the more there is to fall. If you get what I mean, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. Of course, like, be happy, be confident, make sure that you're taking the most out of when you do play good. I just think if I could give advice to anyone, certainly young people playing the game now, is try not to keep the lows at a um, long-term lows, really. Don't let that define the golfer that you are if you have a couple of bad results. And at the same time, don't let one good result raise your expectations massively because then only take one bad shot and all of a sudden you're back down. That's always somewhere I think the Biff has been brilliant at throughout his career is he'll miss a cut and I'll speak to him straight after of course he cares and it bothers him and he gets annoyed you know he's that sort of personality and massively competitive but the day after didn't happen basically it's as if it didn't happen it's like yeah what's next I think that's the sort of mentality is the difference between the lads that are, you know top on tour and the lads that aren't basically I told you I was talking a lot today and that sort of expectation thing oh, it does feel good this that expectation thing it's you've got to play the long game you know if you want to be as good as you can be I mean that was when I was like mid 20s I'm 36 now I'm still doing it 36 years old and I'm still trying to play to the best level that I can play at. And if I realised that at, at mid-twenties, I wouldn't have put myself under as much pressure and, I, and maybe I'd have done better, I don't know. I don't know, you know, you learn these things as you go. It took me a while to learn a few things with the game and certainly the mentality side of things. But that's what, that's kind of advice I'd say, is just don't, don't feel like you have to rush it. Don't feel like one bad result, you've got to do it now. You know, it's, it's not like that. And I think if you can think that way, say think a few more times, but if you can think that way, then you will kind of do what you want to do earlier. So in terms of your practice in here, obviously you've done a lot of technique stuff. You know, when you were like a kid, if you played golf when you were a kid, or you did anything as a kid, I, I don't think there was many that really thought about technique. And my short game when I was a kid was really good, you know, up until maybe 18, 19 years old. I was really, really good. But if you ask me how I played shots, I wouldn't have a clue. Like, literally wouldn't have a clue. How do you hit it like that? Well, I don't know, just did it. And I'm trying to get kind of back into that mentality because that added in with the technique work I've done. I think finding that balance is the key. So... What I've done to try and sort of get back into that way of thinking, like, as I would play as a kid. I don't know if you can see, but I put these dots. So I've got a black dot there, black dot there, red dot there, red dot there, blue dot there, blue dot there, green dot there, green dot there. So completely random dots, but just pick them and try and just hit them without any, like, practice swing, no sort of technique. Just pick a dot and hit it. So let's say that one got me 54, got to launch it low. A little bit low of it, but no thought. Up high blue, give it forward. And there's no thought, no thought whatsoever. Green on the right. Oh, bosh, straight at it. And it's amazing how many good shots and how you can actually hit those dots without any real technical thoughts. I think 90% of golfers would be better if they just walked up and hit it. Get the information, get your yardage, know how far you're at each club so you can pick the club and still make good decisions. But after that, walk up and hit it. No thought. See the shot, bosh, go. So I know to hit that, I've got to hit it straight up my nose and I'm not the most lofted so that dot, okay and all the practice you've done oh Jesus okay so you need to make sure you haven't got any random wooden beams that if you hit it too high it's going to hit that and feel like it could cause you some injuries That's put me off a bit, what was I talking about there?
Oh, look. Wood stains on my golf ball. Wood stains there. Not ideal. Six dots. Nine iron. First one, that red one. All full shots, so I've got to create the right shot. Oh, pure. Straight at it. Bullseye. Green dot. Oh, it's pretty good. Let's go second green dot. These are all just purely reaction. You know, that creates... Pretty good. It creates the trajectory because I can see my target. And I'm just reacting to it. So second green dot, a bit higher. That's hard. No, no, no. Blue. High blue. I'm going to have to go a bit forward with it. Pretty good at nine iron that. Now I know I'm not really talking through. Oh, pure, that was for that blue by the way. I know I'm not really talking through the technical side of things here because I just want to react. I just want to see what it's like. Black dot in the middle there. Good. Two more. Him, then him. Good. And low one to finish. One technical thing I will say, actually, I wasn't thinking this when I do it because I practiced it. But when you're trying to play those flop shot ones and if you've got kind of tight lie, a little bit different if it's sat up. But always make sure, even if you've got it forward, you've got the club face open, always make sure your sternum is over the ball because that's where the club's going to bottom out, wherever your sternum is. Your sternum's back here, you're going to hit the ground here. And it's going to bounce. If it's sat up on fluffy grass, you can afford to have this a little bit behind. It's going to slide underneath it. But if it's tight, like on a mat, sternum is over the ball. Keep it there. Just a little technical thought. but Yeah, I, ju I just think there's a lot to be said for that sort of practice. There's a lot to be said for this video because I have spoken a hell of a lot. I'm like out of breath from speaking. Shut up, Al. Talking rubbish. I think it's really important after the work that I've been doing to get back into that, just reacting, hitting shots. I really enjoy it as well, to be honest. Oh, hold on. I just wanted to do a bit of practice. To just talk through what I'm feeling. I probably got a lot deeper than I thought I might do. And I actually feel better, like confessions of a not yet champion golfer, I think. Might be the way to go. It's quite good to talk it through with people. I know no one can answer me back on here, but if you've got any comments or questions or anything, then please put them down below because I really like to see them and I like responding. I, I really appreciate it actually. You know, a lot of people are really supportive of what I'm doing and I'm just filming myself hitting golf balls. So, you know, I really do, I really do appreciate it. If you could subscribe, if you want to subscribe, they're not all going to be like this. I'm not going to be talking this much in all the videos, by the way. So don't worry. This isn't going to be like a permanent thing. If you could subscribe, though, and if you could like the video, that'd be brilliant. I've got to finish off with a volley before I go, but thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday.